So have you ever wondered what would happen if you wrapped your great 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 grandma into a little package and then pulled her through a long 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 gate and then put her together with all of the other great 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 grandmas you have? That is what we will talk about today. Not specifically maybe your great 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 grandma, but we will talk about someone's ancestral grandma. Today we are exploring the Younger Stone Age. Sounds funny, right? Young and Stone Age in the same name. We are talking about the Farming Stone Age today and more specifically the passage graves that they have left behind. So when it comes to the Stone Age there is oftentimes a little bit of a mystery there because we tend to think about the Stone Age as so far away, so old, so long time ago that we don't think about that there is actually a younger part of the Stone Age as well. So the Stone Age is divided into three different categories or main categories. So these three names is Paleolithicum, the older Stone Age, Mesolithicum, Middle Stone Age or Hunter Stone Age in Swedish at least. And then, then we have Neolithicum, Neo as in new. But you know what? I bet you are very excited about knowing uh, why I'm talking about wrapping little grandmas into packages and pulling them through gates. So <laughs> let's just get on with the video. The Stone Age is a period in time that seems so far away and foreign to a person alive in 2023. Even the name Stone Age makes one think of flint, big huts and simpler times with simpler people. It couldn't be further away from the truth and the proof is the fantastic huge megalithic structures the settlements, the jewelry and the ceramics these humans left behind. Maybe and probably these were even harsher times and maybe the people were just different from us. Not simpler at all. Today we will focus on the ancient passage graves that the people of the Stone Age has left behind for us to see in Sweden's landscape today. The younger period of the Stone Age is called the Farmer Stone Age in Sweden. This is because how farming was spreading throughout these times. What this meant for the people living during the Stone Age was that they could now stay in one and the same place to raise their cattle, families and farms. And when you stay in one place for a longer amount of time, you also bury your loved ones there and you will make up new ways of dealing with their passing away. In the form of new traditions and new rituals taking place on this sacred soil that you have stayed for in generations with your once nomadic family. The culture building these big megalithic monuments during the farming era of the Swedish Stone Age have been named Funnel Beaker Culture. The Funnel Beaker Culture got its name after how their ceramics look like. Active during this period in time was also the Pitted Ware Culture. There was a hunter and gatherer kind of people. In some places there has been finds from both cultures at the same digging site. Or burial fields. So what is a passage grave exactly? Well as the name might give away they are graves 
They are indeed graves. Today you can only see traces of their structural skeletons, but once these looked almost like tiny hill houses, almost like a hobbit house. They consist of three main elements, a long entrance, a grave chamber, and the surrounding hill or mound. Usually they have been placed higher up in the landscape, a bit away from the settlements. There seems to have been a clear distinction between the realm of the living and the realm of the dead. They might have also worked as markers in the landscape for outsiders, that there was indeed people powerful enough to build big megalithic structures living here. As well as maybe markers between the settlement and the farming and the wild outdoors beyond the settlement area. We don't really know. Evidence in archaeology shows, however, that the passage graves were not the church of the village, so to speak. There is a clear distance between the settlements and the grave chambers. There is a very peculiar thing you notice when studying the passage graves of Sweden. The long entrance is always pointing in the same direction. Whichever angle you come from or whichever passage grave you might visit, the entrance usually points towards the sunrise in the east and southeast. And when the sun is going down, it will be on the other side of these chambers. And in the morning, it will light up their entrance again. It is truly an amazing discovery and observation when you first see it. The details and work put into these passage graves is remarkable. The dead were put into the chambers like tiny packages they were in a sitting position, wrapped into boar skins or pig skins, nailed into place with sharp bone needles. The bodies were decorated with amber and tooth pearls. Some of these remains have had amber pendants shaped into hammers or axes. The remains would be dragged through the long entrances like a reversed type of birth going back into the darkness and calm of the uterus. In the chambers, the climate would be very cool and closed off to the outside, which made the bodies to decompose very, very slowly. Outside of the entrances, there has been multiple finds of shards of ceramics, flint, and bones, which suggests that there has been some ritual that might have taken place in honor of the dead and living, maybe in connection to the ancestors joining each other in the realm of the dead, or maybe the passage graves entrance were the place where other rituals and celebrations took place. Maybe sacrifices were left there to bring peace to the deceased. Maybe the sacrifices were meant to keep them in place. What a sight it would have been to be at these locations 5,500 years ago. The archaeological finds suggest the ceramic might have been filled with drinks or food. It is truly amazing the details put into these things and the hard work. These rocks weigh about 13 to 16 or even up to 20 tons. And back in the Stone Age, this meant lifting them using manpower. It also shows how advanced and connected to nature these people were and how socially competent they must have been to construct something like these megalithic chambers. 
it probably takes a lot of communication and trust into lifting 20 ton stones time and time again. And just the fact they had to decide how these monuments are best pointed at the sun and what ritualistic measurements that are suitable for death. Inside some of the passage graves, bones from 100 to 130 different individuals have been found. Which also shows that the graves were used during many generations and during long periods of time. They were reused a lot by many people, probably being placed next to their ancestors. And here they were left for thousands and thousands of years. Sources from the 1700s tell us how these kinds of monuments were made by the real first inhabitants of the north. That would be the giants. Scholars, nobles and peasants alike were agreeing to this. And that might be the explanation to why these monuments have been mostly left alone for all of these years. They probably did not want to be the ones disturbing the giant's slumber. There are also some reports of people hearing singing coming from inside of passage graves, or seeing riders in golden saddles going around the monuments on the back of their horses. The names of these graves are also their own mystery. There are names like King Björn's grave, Girumen, which has been translated into the giantess's oven. And it might tell us more about folklore surrounding these graves that has since been lost in the local community's memory. The people living during the younger period of the Stone Age were different from us. The real question is, just how much and in what way? Maybe the biggest divider between us is just circumstance. They built big houses, farmed land, domesticated animals and organized the uncertain future for their ancestors and their living relatives and loved ones. They were social creatures with the capability to create places of honoring and rituals that two hands alone could never accomplish. They had to deal with saying goodbye to their family members and the very human instinct of not wanting to let go. They also saw the sun rise in the east as a new beginning took place and even in death the sun rising was there as a comfort that today was yet another beginning and never the end. That's the video. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to catch you here the next video as well.